Okay, yeah, it's my great pleasure to introduce Shun Shu from the University of Washington. He's a PhD student there. He's doing very interesting work uh, combining using automated improvers, interactive improvers for reasoning about database queries. Uh, thanks, Neil. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, automated reasoning of database queries. And this is joint work with uh, Constantin, Chenong, Daniel, Brandon, Jared, Alvin, and Dan. Um, first, to motivate us to talk a little bit well. So this is a this is a, a figure I scrapped from uh, Stack Overflow. Well, it kind of shows that uh, SQL is the second popular program languages. Uh, it, the first one is JavaScript, right? And uh, <clears throat> Uh, SQL is great because it actually a restricted abstraction that enables powerful optimizations. Well, uh, there is 30 years of database research uh, resulting in many powerful opti uh, optimizations, uh, which is based on semantic equivalent of SQL rewrite. However, there is lacking tools that can actually reason about SQL equivalences. Well, I, use, I usually use a self-driving car analogy. Uh, it's kind of embarrassing that we have self-driving car right now, we still don't have an automated solver for SQL. And what exactly an automated solver for SQL is, is that for uh, any possible input, uh, we want to check that whether this Q2, uh, Q1 is equivalent to Q2. Well, this is, has a, uh, a series of uh, interesting appli uh, applications. Uh, for example, it can be used to verify the correctness of a query rewrite. So you know that uh, in, in current landscape, uh, the database system is used to develop by big companies like Microsoft, uh, IBM. Uh, however, there is more right now. Like every, uh, like every uh, open source community, like every startup company are developing their own database system. And how to make sure those database systems are as reliable as the uh, ones developed by a big company is a big issue. And second, it could be used for a, a like a semantic caching layer for data systems. And third, uh, it could be used for automated grading on the data management assignment, uh, really to scale the grading, uh, because the limiting factor is, is uh, usually the human, right? And this is, uh, this is actually a very challenging problem. Um, so we have a theoretical result uh, dated back on 50 years ago. Uh, basically, it said that checking the equivalence of two uh, first-order sentences over a finite model is undecidable. Uh, well, SQL, um, SQL is kind of like a superset of uh, first-order sentences because you can actually uh, encode first-order sentences in SQL. Or well, this is like a directly applies that checking two uh, SQL queries are undecidable. And also, um, SQL has a, a rich language features. Uh, you might think SQL just as uh, select from where. Uh, actually, there is way more. Uh, for example, like uh, in SQL, you have uh, aggregation and grouping. Uh, like index, you can specify index. You can specify integrated constraints like a primary key, foreign keys, and you can write correlated subqueries. Uh, well, to solve this problem, we basically have two observations. First, uh, from from Gerda's result. Uh, undecidability doesn't mean there is no proof. And actually, um, there is a, a development in a formal method called interactive theorem prover that can actually validate the mechanized proof. The problem here is that how can we uh, generate, generate this uh, mechanized proof automatically for a, for a pair of SQL queries? And second observation is that uh, we find that in practice, the model of an uh, inequivalent SQL query is usually not very large. And uh, this is actually known to the uh, formal methods uh, researchers as a sort of a small word phenomenon. And this partially explains why constraint solver uh, nowadays are extremely fast. And so why not just, why not kind of reduce the problem and compel SQL to constraint in a constraint solver for model checking? Well, so based on these uh, two observations, we construct a almost automated solver for SQL by combining interactive theorem proving technique and constraint solving technique. So this is the overview of the system, right? 
So essentially, for two SQL queries, we, we have two sort of uh, execution pipeline in parallel. The first is we compile these two SQL queries in, into propositions uh, in inter interactive serum prover. And then we developed uh, a proof search, or we call it a semi decision procedure to generate proofs for this specific set of uh, uh, SQL, SQL equivalences. Well, if the, if the interactive serum prover validates the proof, they are definitely equal, like for any possible given input. And the second, uh, uh, second execution pipeline in parallel is we also compile SQL query into a uh, software constraint. And uh, so basically, we build a model checker uh, using Rosette, a software AD programming language that can uh, find counterexamples for uh, SQL queries. So basically, a counterexample means that uh, a, a specific input, such as these two queries, will uh, evaluate to different results. And this is clearly shows the uh, equivalences. Right? So, uh, so this is a high-level picture of this, uh, uh, of this uh, automated SQL uh, solver. And uh, so let's take a step back. Right? So the first problem, before even we are talking about the uh, automated uh, uh, SQL reasoning, the first thing we need to address is actually the semantic, of, semantic for SQL, right? And uh, we, we kind of, at the beginning of this project, we kind of ask ourselves, what is SQL, right? So if you, if you ask any people what is SQL, it's actually this uh, like a NC uh, uh, standardization document, right? So yeah, you can, you can no notice that there's like more than like 1,700 pages and written in English. Well, I think most people will agree that this is kind of insufficient for rigorous uh, SQL semantics, and there are many uh, subtle issues there, right? So this is like, okay, maybe in the future we can use AI to generate a, like a SQL language model using this thing, but this is clear, clearly not, not the current status. So then uh, we kind of look back to like the origin of SQL, right? So if you take a very high-level point of view of SQL, it's actually not that complicated. Well, first, the data model of SQL is relations. So usually in practical database systems, a relation is an order collection of tuples or a multi-set of tuples, right? Then um, a relation has a schema, uh, which is a set of attributes that each tuple in this relation uh, must obey to. And in a very like, super high level point of view, a SQL query is just a, a sort of a transformation function from a set of uh, input relations uh, to its to, to output, which is also a relation, right? So the sort of common um, underlying abstract semantic for SQL uh, using database community is uh, relational algebra. So um, I will take a, a brief introduction to relational algebra, right? So basically, relational algebra, uh, the sort of the original version of relational algebra uh, is defined over these uh, uh, five operators over relations. Um, so people are like, used to debating whether it should be set semantic and back semantic. Let's say in, uh, in practice, let's just use a back semantic, for example. Right? So the first, first operator is a Cartesian product. Um, so basically, it kind of uh, like generates all pairs, all possible pairs um, of the of the tuples from two relations. And the second, uh, for example, select star from course and student. And the second operator is a selection. It's basically apply a future predicate uh, over a relation. And third, called projection. It's kind of transform. A relation from uh, from from one form to another. Well, in the output relation, uh, it has like less. It project out some columns. For example, uh, if there is a relation name has a, a schema first name and last name, you can do a projection only project the first name. For example, and the fourth operator is union. Um, so here we are talking about back semantic union here. It's basically you you just like concatenate two relations uh, together, and uh, the last one is a uh, uh, 
like a difference. So basically, uh, it's uh, it's I think in mathematics it's called a mo monos. It's kind of like a, a set. It's a different operator over two backs, right? And uh, people usually call this uh, two um, like the the uh, the SQL only containing the first four operators unions of conjunctive queries, and this is actually uh, like a proving uh, decidable, right? But like that seems to be the end of story. But why I'm still here, right? Uh, so unfortunately, uh, there are like more operator related in practice, right? So first, um, like although uh, by default it's uh, like a SQL database is assumes that relation is a back, but there is a explicit uh, duplicate elimination operator uh, distinct or in relation algebra they call delta that sort of uh, convert a back to set. So in practice, the SQL is really like a kind of mixed uh, back and set semantics. And also, uh, there is a, a group by which is uh, grouping a relation, and you can apply a like an aggregation function over the grouping, right? And also, um, so that's, uh, in addition, uh, in practice, people usually uh, specify constraints. For example, key, uh, keys, foreign keys, uh, et cetera, et cetera, right? So I think the real problem here is that, uh, like, there is no sort of like a meta theory for relation algebra, right? So if we are reasoning about the semantic equivalence of two SQL queries, we sort of need such a meta theory. And, and, there, and I, so, I mean, relational algebra is nice, but I'll call this is a leaking abstraction in the sense that uh, what, is, what, is the semantic, what is the semantic of, of relational algebra? Um, so there is, uh, there you, there is uh, uh, existing work on this, uh, um, on this landscape. For example, people actually uh, have a cock formalization of uh, relational algebra. Uh, the, the basic idea is uh, why not formalize a relation as a list, right? That's, a, that's normally how people uh, formalize uh, like a program, in, a program language semantic in Coq. And uh, then two queries are equivalent if they are returning the same result for all possible input relations is also a list. So basically this is an inductive, inductive argument. Well, but the problem is that you need to reason about two lists that are equivalent to permutations. So you can see that uh, the equivalent predicate here is already pretty complicated. It's basically a fixed point operation over list, over inductive, uh, over inductive structure. So I'll give a brief example here, right? So think about these uh, two simple SQL queries. The first one, you union two relations R and S, and then apply a future predicate. And the second one, you apply a future predicate B over R and S first, and then union them. And this, these two queries clearly should be the same. Right? So think about if you are using a, a, like a model relation of the list. Um, so basically, you, 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 have, you need to do a lot of inductions. So you, like normally people first people do is first do an induction on R, and then do an induction on S. And this is kind of less inductions. And for the, uh, for the equivalent predicate, uh, there is an, there's another induction on the output relation, right? So this is, this is known to be a super hard problem even in the, in the program language and formal method research, right? So, um, like, uh, so using this, using this uh, sort of a relational relation as a list semantics, uh, you can prove some uh, simple SQL rewrite. So actually, um, for, for, for query rewrite like an uh, idempotent of selection, uh, like the, the author used like uh, 40 lines of Coq code to prove this very, very simple SQL rewrite. And, it, so, and also, due to the complexity of the proof, very limited rewrite has been proven under the semantic. So this is clearly not going anywhere like if we want to do a, if, if we want to develop an automated reasoning system for SQL, right? So here we, we come up with a different idea. Well, so the core of our idea is, uh, so we, we, why not model relation just a function, 
right? Because here, we, are, we sort of only care about the real, we only care about the equivalence of two SQL queries. Uh, unlike, the, uh, unlike the previous work, is you actually need to extract a system. So the, co the idea here is that we model a relation as a function from a tuple to, to a, let's say, a lateral number. And I will claim this is really is like how uh, a relation or a multi-set should be uh, modeled mathematically. And then, and then we model a predicate uh, as a function from a tuple to either zero or one, right? And then this uh, SQL query could be modeled by uh, select, apply the future predicate to the relation could be modeled by uh, the multiplication of the evaluation result of the predicate and times the original uh, multiplicity or numbers of appearance uh, of this tuple in this relation. So that's a, uh, that's a, uh, and then a union, like back semantic union is simply the uh, addition of these multiplicities. Right. Is join natural join? <laughs> is, is join natural join? It looks like you're duplicating tuples in the third formula. Right? You're mapping, it's, if I understand correctly. It's, it's a Cartesian product. There is no join here, right? The third one. Yeah, okay. So if it's, but if it's, if it's, a, pro, if it's a Cartesian product, then don't you, don't you end up with two copies of the tuple in the select star from R? So, yeah, that's. I don't know, maybe I don't understand the function, but. Um, so, so basically, the predicate will evaluate to either zero or one, right? So let's say this, for, this is try to model the output relation. But what does what does it mean to have a Cartesian product of a function and a? It's a it's I mean it's not a Cartesian product. It's actually the uh, sorry, yeah. So this there is uh, my bad. So there is no so Cartesian. There's a notational problem here. That's all. I'm not it's, questioning. It's just think of as a. Uh, the function of multiplication in natural numbers. Because this is a natural number, and this is a natural number. So we're talking about how to define a function, sort of define a symbolic function of this, uh, of this SQL query. So let's say we, because the original, uh, the, the or, so think of. So the result is going to be a binary relation over natural no, numbers. multiplication. It's multiplication. Oh, it is multiplication. Yeah, yeah. It's just multiplication. Just two numbers. Got it. Okay. No, I'm sorry. No, no. I read it the same way. I was super confused. Well, it's the same symbol, right? Yeah. 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 Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I should have make a better, better notation. Yeah. So, so basically, does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Well, you can see that by reasoning relation as a function. Um, for this, uh, for these two SQL queries, um, if we try to um, try to de decode, uh, like encode these two relations this way, um, like the proving the equivalent is super simple, right? So it's just the distributivity of multiplication, right? So I would argue that uh, this way of uh, uh, encoding relations as a function or bring sort of algebraic reasoning to, uh, to, to the actual, uh, like a SQL query. So for example, if you want to prove this in Coq, it just, um, I mean, one way, you, could, you could prove the, um, uh, because you could prove the uh, distributivity of natural numbers, and then just using that, the lemma, and call it a day, right? So, and more, like, I will show later, you actually don't need to reason about in terms of natural numbers. And there is an even simpler way of, of doing, doing such kind of reasoning. Do you ever make use of that the functions are finite? Because, so so, 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 so the, the, uh, the set of uh, valid formulas over finite structures, formulas that are valid over finite structures, is not recursive. That's, that's a really good question. And, 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 but 
and, and that was the starting point with the do you have proof or not. But here, I mean, at least on the surface, uh, I, you don't mention whether it's finite or infinite. You mean the uh, function? The functions, right? So, so, so you want to prove a theorem over finite, all finite structures, if, if you are, say, in, in theoretical database, then. And, uh, but you have proved that the theorem is over all structures, finite or infinite. Yeah. Uh, and, and then you have a different, uh, then you're not, uh, then you are, say, in first world case, or first world case, or it's I mean, that, that in are there any interesting theory equivalences that are true only for the finite structures? Yes, there is, but uh, it's like a, a super adversarial uh, example that uh, it's, it's, a it's, a, it's a Boolean. Basically, you can encode some super um, uh, super weird like Boolean query to like only equivalent under finite uh, finite structure, but not like equivalent. But here, and I, then this approach will prove it. Uh, so I think, so here, so it's a, it's a little bit tricky here because, um, so as, a, as you can say, we, the function didn't assume anything. It didn't assume finiteness, right? right? So uh, like, if you're talking about function, um, so basically if you think of uh, like, so first, finite relations, you can still encode a finite, you, you can still sort of represent a finite relation using such a function. It's just sort of like a, uh, for for example, if you have a database with tuple, with a, with a, with a single tuple, then the multiple, the the output of this function is a single tuple. For anything else, it's zero, right? So you can you can you can still encode that. So in that sense, so this semantics still uh, like will apply to to finite as well, yes. right? But um, so there's another kind of levels of fin finiteness is uh, uh, the the tuple itself, the domain of this function might be infinite because, for example, you can have a database uh, uh, strength, right? So that seems to have to be, to be dealt anyway. That's... I mean, the, the function would only be... infinite if the domain was... But, okay, uh, I'm, I'm sidetracked. Yeah. So, I... <laughs> I mean, maybe we can talk more offline to make this more uh, specific. Um, so it's this, uh, this kind of uh, uh, algebraic, algebraic reasoning uh, looks, looks good so far. Um, however, there are two uh, problems of using this approach, right? So I think first problem is a, is a projection. Let's take an example on this uh, simple uh, database query. Let's project out the first name from the name relation, which has two attributes. For example, um, in this concrete, concrete example, like let's say it takes this concrete input, um, then the, that's a result of this, this query, right? So if you think about the, the input relation, it's basically said if the tuple is Michael Schulman, the multiplicity it returns one, uh, Michael Jordan returns one, etc. And for anything else, it returns zero, right? So, the, the try to like the encoding of this SQL SQL query is really like how can we encoding the output relation using sort of using the uh, using the input relation. So here for selection, uh, the schema actually changes, right? Then what you end, end up with is basically we need a sort of a, um, operator or operation that add up all the multiplicities of the tuples from the original relation, uh, from the original relation with the, same, uh, with the same value only on the first, right? How, um, how can we do that? Well, um, a, naive, a naive idea is why not just define a summation function, right? So, uh, we, sum, so we, we, summate, uh, we do a summation uh, over all possible tuples uh, of the uh, original relation uh, name, right? So, and we just add up uh, 
all the, all the multiple states that have the same uh, first name. And uh, so basically, the, um, this, uh, this is a representation of the uh, equality predicate. Uh, it will be evaluated to either 0 or 1, right? And this is exactly, um, and the issue of this approach is how, like, first, we need to define what is the summation at the first time. And uh, um, like this gentleman mentioned there, uh, like, summation usually can only be defined in a, like a finite structure, right? How can we define a finite over infinite structure? I mean, sure, we can, uh, like, uh, we, we can go back to the uh, induction again, but this is kind of defeat our purpose. And also, um, if we need to reason about this, if we need to reason about this summation, like abstractly, then we sort of need to define, right? So what would like define interpretation of this summation? So this is the um, first problem of using this uh, uh, relation as a function uh, way of doing algebraic reasoning. And the second, second uh, yeah, so any questions here? And the second problem we are facing is a duplicate enumeration. And uh, so basically, how can we, uh, how can we uh, convert uh, bags of relations to set to sets, right? So a, pro a possible proposal here is that we can define step function, right? So basically, uh, we can define step function applied to a natural number. For zero, it's for zero, it's zero, and for anything else, it's one, right? But sort of uh, again, like if we define this, define this, uh, this, this again becomes an inductive definition if we want to reason reason about this formally. And how can we, like, uh, it's kind of get back to uh, inductive, inductive proof again, right? So this is, so the first, uh, so the f sort of the first attack um, or the first uh, solution we have to this problem is that uh, uh, we, use, we try to use a different encoding, right? So basically, we use a homotopy type theory, uh, try to model a homotopy type instead of natural number. Basically, say we we just need the abstract reasoning of the type, the type equivalences, right? So we just we don't we don't want to uh, like reason about the uh, natural number uh, con inductively. How this and this is actually very nice because uh, we actually use a dependent pair type, the sum type, to represent the summation, right? It just become a, a it, it just become a type construction. And uh, we also use a squash type to to represent the duplicate emination. And uh, so another bonus we get here is that uh, uh, because in homotopy type theory it unifies type and propositions. Um, so all if we want to prove two squash two squash type are the same type, um, it it's just a I mean it's just a two uh, prove two the equivalence of two two propositions, and you, we can actually use a deductive proof. Um, so I, I wouldn't go too deep here, but this is just like a, a high-level idea. Uh, and by using this, by using this approach, um, we have been able to prove a, a, prove a wide range of database uh, query rewrites. So one example we actually prove uh, is this uh, uh, famous magic set rewrite that uh, uh, deals with uh, that sort of a, a very powerful optimization that makes the uh, uh, analytic query, especially in queries with aggregation, much faster. It involves these uh, uh, three, uh, it can be decomposed into these three transformations uh, using the stemming joints, and uh, we, we, we can prove all of them right, using this uh, uh, new construction. And uh, the length of proof is, is usually less than uh, like a 30 lines of code. So this is, this is our uh, like a first, uh, sort of first uh, formal semantic for, uh, for SQL queries. Um, 
Um, so before I move to the legs, any questions? And then we sort of ask the question, like, can we do better, right? Then, um, like, <coughs> that's, um, so this is this is basically our uh, we like because sometimes uh, homotopy type theory is really nice, uh, but first the uh, the interactive theorem prover support for homotopy type theory is not quite there yet. Um, also, one big problem here is that uh, the proof we still need to manual proof, right? And write write the proof to show that those two uh, homotopy types are the same. So can we fully automate this process? So this is where um, like our second work come up. Um, so the basic idea is that we actually, the, the foundations we need to prove this, uh, these equivalences uh, is actually quite, quite small, right? So can we extract a very minimal set of axioms that very simple and only using equations, but can prove all, like, all the uh, curve equivalences I've shown you before, right? So basically, that's why we uh, adopt this semi ring approach. So our first, uh, like, like I showed before, our first ob observation is that uh, a projection actually requires a summation, right? So the solution here is that uh, we need a, like, we need an infinitary uh, summation operator defined abstractly. And the second idea here is that uh, uh, we need to extend uh, the, uh, the semi ring with a duplicate enumeration operator or distinct operator. And uh, the, the solution here is that we sort of uh, add this uh, native construct of a squash operator. So it uh, defines as if uh, the squash of zero is zero, and squash of anything else is is one, right? And also, for this uh, non-monotone operator, for example, except not exist, um, we need a not not operator. And here we define not uh, not zero is one, and not anything else is zero. So, sorry. And then. We can formally define a uh, embodied semi ring as a structure, um, kind of an extension to the uh, classical uh, commutative semi ring. So you can see here the first, uh, the first five operators are the uh, other standard operators in a commutative semi ring. And with uh, three additions the squash, the knot, and the summation, right? And the challenge here is that how can we sort of in interpret or uh, like model the semantic of these three uh, new operators? Uh, so you, uh, for those who are interested, the full list of axioms are shown in the paper. It's, not a, it's only like a less than 10 axioms. Uh, I'll just show you one example here, right? So how can we, there is, how can the new uh, summation operator seems very interesting. And how can we uh, do sort of a maximization of this summation operator? So basically, we find that uh, uh, the summation operator can be totally defined using four minimal axioms. The first axiom is uh, uh, distributivity, right? And this is intuitively uh, true in mathematical summations. You can distribute summation over over a plus. Also, is the commutativity. And you can define, you can commute, uh, you, you sort of can exchange the order of two summations. Third is uh, associativity. And uh, uh, it's basically said you can sort of push the uh, multiplication into the, uh, into the summation. And third is how summation interact with, uh, with a squash. Um, you basically can, because after the squash, um, this become either zero, this, this become a binary, <coughs> sort of binary anyway, because it's either zero or one, then you can 
uh, you can push the squash within the summation, right? So this is a um, this is a mm, this is an example of the uh, maximization of summation. So, and in addition, um, like I mean, as I mentioned before, we also need a yeah. I mean, before I uh, before I move to Lex, any question about this uh, approach in general? What what are the meta properties of the axiomatization? Is, is it uh, Sorry, adequate for? Are they, what what are the uh, uh, what, what are the meta properties of the axiomatization? They they are they're sound. Uh, yeah. Do they capture some? That's a that's a good question. So we don't know yet. They, I think that's an open question. But uh, uh, like we sort of use this. We haven't find it in practice. We prove a not the number of database rewrite. We haven't find a, um, like a, we haven't find a rewrite that cannot be proved in this, using this approach. I think, of course, I think in high level, of course, if you abstract out something, there might be something you cannot prove. But that seems not the case, at least for in terms of using to prove database, uh, like a database equivalences. Can you use them as directed rewriting? Sorry? Can you use them in, 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 in a single direction? Yeah. You seem to be left to right, or well, actually, except for the data. Yeah, this, this is actually, I mean, that's a pretty, um, um, that, that's a very nice observation. This is actually how we come up with a semi-decision procedure. It's kind of do sort of normalization. Yeah, do, doing sort of normalization using a single, single direction rewrite. But uh, at the end, we still need to uh, do a, for, for example, do a permutation over the summation variable, uh, like it's not a, um, it's not a canonical form. We still need to check the, um, we still need to check the like the isomorphism, of, yeah, it's it's, it's sort of a normal form but not a canonical form so of. When you have commutativity, create equivalent classes. Yeah, yeah. So we still sort of need to do the uh, equivalent classes you know, of reasoning. So, so this is a this is a very high level idea of this uh, sort of abstract reasoning of or symbolic reasoning of uh, SQL queries, and there, are, I mean, I mean, there are actually more work in the theoretical database for they call this FAQ. They try to uh, use the same sort of approach to reason about a matrix, matrix multiplication, machine learning applications as well. This is like, I think Hong. It's a so this is a this is a recent uh, work. Uh, so how is a professor in you, uh, like Buffalo? Oh, yeah. <coughs> so, mm, so that's a maximization of sum. Um, so in addition, we also want to address the semantic equivalence of uh, database queries and their uh, integrated constraints, right? So we also another contribution of the, this work is that we also come up with a, a very nice. Uh, Optimization of the constraint, right? Only only using these uh, semi ring identities. So, for example, um, we can define the key constraint um, purely using this equation, right? So, it's maybe a little bit hard to read, but uh, like in principle, it basically says if these two tuples, t t and t prime. Agrees on on k, uh, which is a which a k is a key of of the relation R. Um, then there are two things happens, right? First, if they agree on k, then these two tuples must be the same. Otherwise, this equation doesn't hold. And second, if they agree on k, I mean, sort of for any tuples that with multiplicity, uh, like a, a two. It cannot have a multiplicity uh, bigger than bigger than one. Otherwise, this uh, this equation doesn't hold as well. So this is sort of a constraint to both uniqueness. This is a uh, this is a single equation that constraint to both uh, the uniqueness of the value of k across all the relations. And uh, similarly, 
we could define a we could define a foreign key uh, constraint similarly, and by using this approach, the entire like a uh, like the entire semantic of the SQL, including uh, like integ integrated constraint, basically becomes the uh, all, becomes uh, axioms uh, over these new U semi rings, and all these axioms are uh, identities, which is uh, equalities. There is no uh, like a uh, exist existential quantifiers. There is no implication or what, whatsoever, right? Um, so, so let's so let me show you a concrete example which kind of a uh, SQL equivalence that this new uh, semantic can can prove. So, um, this is a this is an example from a uh, like a Sigma paper of the IBM Starburst uh, query optimizer. So, you can see that uh, uh, this query is indeed. Uh, uh, like hit the every um, like a hit every pain point of the subtotal SQL semantic. It's a uh, you can see the first query is a there is a subquery and within the subquery there is a, a distinct which makes this uh, uh, this from this IP relation like a set semantic relation, but there is no distinct out, out distinct uh, in the outer outer query, and the second query. Um, like there is there is distinct in the second query, right? So and also we know that uh, this uh, item number is a key of item, right? It's it's really not super intuitive to see why they are like they're equivalent. And if you know if you read the paper, it actually I mean it's it basically because um, since this item number is a key. And uh, this join will only end up with a with a relation with a like a unique tuples. So, um, so that's a if you if you encode these uh, two SQL queries in uh, like using our approach, so we can see this is a this is a formula of Q1 and this is a formula of Q2. Uh, I will like a. I will ignore the actual proof, uh, but basically, if you apply the rewrite, uh, apply the U semi ring axioms, uh, and like using our uh, semi decision algorithm, so essentially we can sort of normalize the Q one in this form. Right? It's basically uh, you uh, apply the apply the key constraint to uh, to make this to to extend the squash operator and do the uh, do a bunch of uh, associativity commutativity rewrite and uh, then you can see that after this transformation this uh, q1 uh, becomes ex uh, exactly uh, the same as q2 well the is the, the name of the variable here doesn't matter it's just a just just a binding right so so this is uh, yeah. So um, I will I will I will skip the uh, the details of the algorithm here, but uh, in principle, after uh, after modeling SQL after modeling SQL using our new semantics, um, we we can generalize uh, the check in Q and Q two to basically uh, two cases. It's, we first do a uh, do a normalization. It's basically like the single direction rewrite, like this uh, this gentleman mentioned before, and then checking the checking the uh, SQL equivalence becomes two known cases. Firstly, is that uh, uh, for the unions of conjunctive query under set semantics, it basically becomes checking the homomorphism, and uh, for unions of conjunctive query under back semantic, it, it becomes checking uh, isomorphism. And for the constraint, uh, the way we do here is similar to the uh, chase algorithm known in database community. Uh, we actually extend chase to back semantic because ch chase, us chase usually can only work in uh, static semantics. And I mean, the chase, the so-called chase here is really just to apply the, um, apply the axiomization of the integrated constraint we define to rewrite this uh, Algebraic expressions, right? So this is a 
Um, right? So this is a, how we, uh, this is the approach we developed for uh, proving equivalences, equ equivalences of SQL queries automatically. And I should mention here this, uh, although this, uh, uh, we, this semi uh, decision procedure is sound, uh, it's, although it's not incomplete, uh, it actually works beyond this, uh, uh, beyond the unions of conjunctive queries. It just uh, uh, for the for the for the scope for the SQL queries beyond the scope, it's uh, it's possible to run forever, right? So, um, bef before I move on to the uh, next section, is there any questions? And uh, the the next question we're going to ask is that, uh, uh, like I like I said before, this this procedure is sound but incomplete. Then what about uh, inequivalent SQL queries, right? So that's where um, our third contribution is, which is we 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 build a model checker for uh, finding counter examples uh, of uh, inequivalent SQL queries using constraint solver. Let me go back to the uh, system architecture. Um, so you can see this is uh, the the um, the other part of this uh, this tool. Well, um, like more specifically, um, for a set of database queries for two uh, for a pair of database queries Q1 and Q2, we compile them to we solve sort of using uh, Rosette to de to develop a to develop a symbolic executor of them. And compile them to uh, Z3, uh, Z3 constraint, right? So hopefully Z3 will find a counter example. We, to make the solving more efficient, we also do the uh, e like a increment, uh, in do do the like increment in increase the model size from the smallest to the largest, right? So the, I think the the uh, the interesting question here is that do how can we encode SQL? Using uh, using constraint solver, right? So, in fact, we didn't we didn't encode the SQL directly using constraint solver, but we're actually using the a server server aided language called Rosette. It's basically a, a a record layer on top of uh, on top of Z3, and the encoding uh, works like that. Um, for a SQL queries, we encode a tuple as a list. Uh, you can think of uh, a tuple is just a list of integers, and we we encode a relation as a tuple tagged with multiplicity, right? Still using this uh, um, uh, using this uh, uh, kind of a relation as a function idea. It's just like a, uh, encode. So, for example, a relation is a list of a pair. The first uh, element of a pair is a tuple, like I defined before. And the second uh, element of the pair is an uh, integer, which represent, represents the multiplicity or number of occurrence. And uh, a SQL query is basically in, in, uh, encoded as a constraint over, uh, over symbolic values. So essentially, this, this, uh, the integer here is, is not a, like a concrete integer, because it's kind of a, a constraint solver basically like work as a reverse way. Is like try to com try to find what the concrete assignment of this symbolic variable is, right? And uh, uh, and of course we have a we did a few uh, performance optimizations. For example, uh, in this constraint solver, uh, it's kind of tricky to uh, so we need to basically draw a line of the concrete evaluation of the symbolic evaluation, right? So basically, um, try we try to maximize the sim the concrete evaluation and minimize the symbolic evaluation. Uh, sort of uh, intuitively, this will um, like decrease the size of the decrease of size of constraint uh, the row set sent to sent to these three. Also, we develop a few uh, like a symmetry uh, breaking techniques, right? So this is uh, um, I mean there are like uh, more things I can talk about, but this is a briefly idea how uh, this uh, 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 symbolic evaluation of SQL works. So then let's, um, so before, before I talk about the evaluation, let's actually um, 
look at the uh, online demo, right? So, so this is a this is a front end we developed for Corset. You can see here you can um, you can specify schema and a, a table uh, defined based on the schema and essentially two SQL queries and and verify these two SQL queries are equivalent or not, right? So here, uh, the SQL query basically, um, the first query is a, contains a, uh, like a correlated, contains a, uh, contains a correlated subquery, and the second query um, basically contains a group by, right? So, like, is this two SQL query are equivalent? Well, um, this two, this actually used to consider equivalent, and uh, uh, Kim W actually published a, like a paper in a top database journal, uh, like in '82, that. Uh, Claim that he did discover new semantic equivalent SQL rewrite, but unfortunately, after three years later, people find it's, it's, there, there is a there is a bug of this this query. So if you use uh, well, of course the demo is broken. I don't have uh, yeah I don't have Wi-Fi here. Yeah, so <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, so I mean, I can I can provide the link of the. the oh, I mean, you can you can try the demo online. It's just uh, it's a it's a public available, right? So. Um, so for this, uh, let me switch back. Um, essentially, um, so if you actually run this, run this demo, Corset will return a counter example within three seconds. So the tricky case here is basically um, the the second query ignores the cases when the group by uh, the group by the you do the group by the group is empty. And this, the first query considers that case, right? And also the kind of example we find using Corset is pretty small. Uh, then let's talk about the evaluation here. Um, we we evaluate Corset using four uh, real world data sets. The first is bug. It's basically three uh, real world optimizer bug we find from uh, a bug report online. And second is X data, which is a query and mutant pairs collect from a test generation framework. Uh, the third is the exam. This is a set of uh, questions from the undergrad data management class in UW. And uh, uh, believe me, uh, a lot of them are pretty tricky. And the, the average GPA of the undergrad for this class is not very high. And third, uh, and the fourth is the rules. Uh, we collect 68 query rewrite rules from both database and literature, basically uh, 20 years of Sigma papers, and uh, um, around 40 real world rewrite rules from an uh, open source uh, optimizer generated called Apache CalSet. And the first uh, three categories contains inequivalent SQL queries, and the last two categories contain equivalent SQL queries. So, first is the um, first is uh, for the, for the inequivalent SQL queries, um, Corset can automatically find counterexample for all of them, and w so we can see here the solving time is pretty efficient. It's usually less than ten seconds, and for the uh, for the equivalent SQL queries, um, uh, they are more tricky. So for the for the rules. Um, for the query rewrite rules from a, a database literature and the optimizer, there is a total uh, 68. We can automatically decide uh, 62 of them. And uh, the average time is less than 20 seconds. Uh, there is six ones uh, 
it ran out of time. Uh, but we find that uh, uh, you can still use our tool to write your own name proof to prove that, pro prove them. And for the, um, yeah, and that for the exam, uh, we can prove uh, four, uh, three out of four, right? So, and uh, those, uh, those, those rule, those equivalent SQL queries that uh, need to be manually proved are all uh, like beyond the scope of uh, UCQ, of course, right? So the other worth to mention that is that for this, uh, um, for the equivalent SQL queries, um, the the proof we find is usually pretty small. For example, uh, it takes like a, a 400 lines of uh, a code in the previous approach. It's only there is one example only takes a, a 15 15 uh, nice of proof in, in Cosset. And the average proof size is, is roughly about uh, uh, 20 to 30, uh, 30, 30 nice of code, right? So, um, so that's, uh, yes, yeah, so any question for the evaluation? When you prove the rules equivalent, you can use that for optimization and SQL optimizer. Is that um, so we to so the, the interface we currently have is a SQL to prove two SQL queries, and the way we did that is we extract two SQL queries. Um, like it, it's very easy to so the the real optimizer the real rules are usually in terms of query plans. It's actually but it's very easy to write query plans using SQL. But is the, so is the, would you then use it for, as a test harness? Or, um, for so the way we... Or, 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 or use um, it to synthesize optimizations? The, I mean, these, these, these are all possible applications. But the current new, uh, we, we're using Calcite is we actually uh, try, try to help them with the testing. The so... So, for example, Calcite has has an input SQL query. That's our query one, and after the optimization, it becomes a query plan. So they have a reverse tool that can reverse the query plan back to SQL. Then basically, where we can, it's kind of like a trans, um, like a translate validation, right? So like we sort of, and the, I mean, the real word challenge here is that uh, uh, like every Every database internal has its own form format of query plan, etc. And uh, for, for this is this is this is the most practical usage right now. And we and you can imagine more uh, more advanced applications. So, yeah, like I showed before, um, like we develop a um, we develop a full stack of Cosset, in, including the uh, server core, uh, web service, an online demo, and an automatic automated grader. And the automatic grading tool is deploying UW um, like a two database management data management classes uh, since uh, since last year, and this uh, um, this work has won like a Sigma best demo, and uh, happens to be the uh, top one trending racket project in GitHub. And my joke is that uh, if you want to make a top one trending GitHub project, you need to use a like a less popular language. Uh, so. I mean, <clears throat> uh, in conclusion, I, I present Cosset, uh, the first practical SQL solver. Um, Cosset is based on a new uh, axiomatic semantic of SQL. Um, we implement a stemmy decision procedure for uh, unions of conjunctive queries under both set and back semantics with integrated constraint. And uh, the, uh, the core idea of this uh, arch architecture of Cosset is uh, we actually integrate both interactive SQL improving and constraint solving uh, to solve this really hard problem. And uh, in addition, I believe that uh, automated reasoning brought by uh, formal methods plus domain-specific semantic will need to a uh, more reliable and more optimized future data systems. So for the um, uh, assignment grading, uh, what is this task that the students are actually solving that this is checking them? Sorry? What is the task that the students are solving? 
are they given one of the curious are and, and they try to write another curious no, that's given an English description give an English dis uh, description write a database query so then we test the student answer against the standard answer right okay S I mean um, we find that uh, the the automatic grader is actually in like a uh, can find tricky cases that the um, the TA, for example, cannot find, or TA or graduate student cannot find. But uh, uh, there is a downside that, uh, um, so at the end of the day, like for the grading, you need to give partial credit. And uh, we're still kind of working on how to give partial credit for student for the equivalent SQL queries. That, that would be a pretty interesting research topic as well. Have you considered the case that Sometimes the equivalent is data dependent. Well, then they are not universally equivalent, right? So it can be. Uh, can you give an example? Example: Some predicates depends on the actual data to decide if, it, if they are equivalent or not. Well, so I would say uh, it's really like a, a different equivalent criteria. Uh, I think one way to extend, one way to address this problem is that uh, sort of uh, have a have a way to let the user express this uh, sort of data semantic formally, and then um, I think it's possible that we extend to that work to handle the such cases. And in fact, we do know like a more general um, like a data semantic, for example. Uh, there is work from Edinburgh. Talk, they have a, like a conditional functional dependency. Um, these, um, I think it's it's, a, it's in, interesting to see. Can we express that? But uh, on the other hand, practical, practically speaking, I mean, like uh, in the real world SQL databases, there is no way to there is no way for the user to specify such kind of a, like a data semantics. Yeah. 